All right, wonderful. Welcome everyone to this webinar for getting ready for summer. And as you just heard from my co-host Jody Rogers, the two of us are tag teaming and we're um, doing a collaborative effort so that we can kind of join forces and put our heads together and provide some amazing content for all of you. So for some of you who may not know me, my name is Melissa Kotlinberg and Jody and I actually met through doTERRA and we are, uh, we call each other Doe sisters. So we're not actually on the same team, but um, we both have mutual respect for one another and what we do in doTERRA. And so we thought we would join forces to bring this amazing content to you every Monday at 8 p.m. Um, so as Jody mentioned, for those of you who are just hopping on, if you haven't heard yet, we will be doing an interactive chat. So if you just hit the chat button and then you'll see an option there that you can change yours it's probably um, defaulted to all panelists. So then that would mean basically the only people that can see your question would be those who are speaking. So right now I would be the only one who would see your question. And because Jody has now reverted to an attendee, she won't actually see your question. And so because we want to bring this as an effort together, we're gonna be sharing questions and answers together. Um, just switch it to all panelists and attendees and then everybody will see your questions, including Jody. So Jody will be managing the chat tonight. Thank you, Jody, for doing that so that I don't have to be distracted by the chat while I'm presenting material. And um, again, just change it to all attendees and or all panelists and attendees, and then uh, Jody will be able to see your question. So welcome everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. We are excited to have you along in this journey with us. And um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a mom of five. And um, we've been using these doTERRA essential oils for over five years. I've been doing the business for five years. And um, I'm just really loving the life-changing effects that these oils have on ourselves, our family, uh, particularly my, my one son who has some pretty serious congenital heart defects. And also just the oils just made a huge difference for my own mental health and my family's health in general. So that's what made me really passionate about the oils. And so now I share that with others. And um, Jody and I are both wellness educators with doTERRA. So tonight we are actually giving away a free oil. And um, I have in my hand here a five mil bottle of the Aroma Touch Massage Blend. And um, I'm giving this one away today uh, because when we're talking, in, you'll see in our webinar, you'll see in the, um, in the content that we're bringing forward that it's a really great oil for muscle aches and pains. And so in the summertime, sometimes we're out in the garden or maybe we're out kicking a soccer ball around or you know doing whatever and so sometimes we get a little bit of aches and pains in our muscles and our joints so that's the oil that we're giving away today so if anyone here was invited by someone other than jody or myself so if you were invited by someone else then maybe put in the chat we'll see your name right away we'll see that it's you who's chatting but just maybe mention you know, I was invited by Samantha or I was invited by Jessica or just tell us who invited you and then you and the person who invited you will be entered into a draw to win this Aroma Touch oil at the end. We'll be giving that away at the end. I'll bring Jody back on again and, um, and then we'll give that oil away. So without further ado, let's get started with our topic for tonight and that is um, providing you with information so that you can be ready for summer. So this is a, an introduction to Jody and myself, and we are your wellness educators. We are the hosts for your Monday evenings with oils. And our goal really is to help you understand the power of essential oils so that you can be prepared for anything. And that's why we're bringing to you so many different topics because we wanna share with you how you can use essential oils for so many different things. So first off, let's just do a brief little intro here to what essential oils are. So if you're brand new to essential oils and maybe you don't even know what they are, they're basically the natural aromatic compounds from a plant. So they're the part, they come from the part of the plant that smells nice. And then those, um, those smelly parts, those smelly compounds are extracted from the plant and they are either steam distilled or cold pressed. And then when you put it in a bottle and we use it, um, we have the same kind of health benefits as what the plant would have. They contain hundreds of different compounds and they provide so many different uh, versatile abilities to combat threats and to help us with our health 
and without building up resistance. So that's how they're a little bit different from some of the synthetic pharmaceuticals. This here is a picture of a peppermint leaf. On the left, there's a, a peppermint plant. And then on the right, you see that same peppermint leaf magnified a few thousand times. And you see those, um, those white egg looking shapes, those ovals, those are actually the oil sacs from the, that, are, that sit on top of the plant. And um, so if you were to pick uh, a peppermint leaf or an oregano leaf and you kind of like crumpled it up in your hands or even if you put it in your mouth and you chewed it, you would be basically crushing those oil sacs and you would be um, getting the benefit from that essential oil. So what happens now when we extract those oil sacs off of the leaf and put it in a bottle, um, then, we, then we're getting the aromatic benefit of the, of the plant. And it's really important to realize how potent these essential oils are. One drop of peppermint oil is the equivalent to 28 cups of peppermint tea. So they are highly, highly concentrated chemical compounds that can help us with our health, um, but they're very, very powerful. So if you are the kind of person who drinks a cup of peppermint tea in the evening to kind of calm your digestive system, just know that um, a drop of peppermint oil would be as potent as 28 cups of peppermint tea. And doTERRA has a standard for their essential oils, and we call that the CPT, CPTG standard, which is their quality and purity standard. So the CPTG stands for Certified Pure Therapeutic Grade. That's what the name is in the US. And here in Canada, it's known as the Certified Pure Tested Grade. So it's basically just our standard of testing for purity and potency. And um, it's very unique to doTERRA. There's no other company that can claim the CPTG trademark. It's really important to know when we're using essential oils that not all oils are created equal. So some of you may have come on here tonight and maybe you have not tried doTERRA before, but maybe you use oils from another company. And that's okay, but we're here to teach you a little bit more about the oils that we're using are doTERRA oils. And um, so the recommendations that we make for you today for Maybe sometimes we, we have a recommendation to use the oils internally, like you'll notice in some of our recipes for summer drinks. We definitely wouldn't want to be just recommending that with all essential oils because they're not all created equally. So something that um, to look for, uh, something that you should be mindful of when you're purchasing essential oils is their testing. Do you know what type of testing was done on that essential oil? Do you know which company did the testing? And I feel like most importantly, are you provided with the results from the, from the testing that was done? You can see on the bottom here, the little logo that popped up, the APRC, that stands for Aromatic Plant Research Center. And that is the testing center that doTERRA uses for all of their essential oils. And it's a third party company. So basically doTERRA sends the oils to this company. The company doesn't even know which, um, which brands or which companies are sending them the oils. They just provide the testing report. doTERRA receives that testing report. And then from that report, they make a decision about whether or not that meets our high standards. And if it meets our high standards, then they go on to sell the oil. If it doesn't meet the high standards, then that oil is not used at all. Another thing to keep in mind is the sourcing. So sourcing has to do with where those oils are grown, where they're sourced. Are they ethically and sustainably harvested? Are we completely, um, you know, destroying the land as we are um, harvesting the plants for our essential oils? Or are we making sure that we are being ethical and, and making sure that that plant can actually sustain itself and, and reproduce itself so that we're not, you know, overproducing oils and then not having enough plants to continue on with their growth. And also, do you know which country they come from? With essential oils, with doTERRA essential oils, we are growing our plants in countries where that plant is meant to grow best. So that means that the, um, the wind conditions are going to be optimal, the soil, um, the fertilizer, the, the minerals in the soil, the climate. So all of that is gonna be at an optimal level. So wherever that plant was meant to grow in, in its indigenous land, that's where we're getting our oils. And um, we actually have something called Source to You. So it's a website that is owned by doTERRA and you can actually look up um, where your oils were sourced, so what country they came from, and you can also look up the testing report for the oil. So on the bottom of every oil, you'll actually see a white lot number and you just enter in that lot number and you will be provided the GCMS testing report for that essential oil. 
We also have something called co-impact sourcing. This is um, an initiative that, that doTERRA has with the farmers who source our oils so that our farmers are being paid before, during, and after the harvest. They're being paid a fair wage and they're being treated fairly, unlike some essential oil companies where they are, or, or some essential oil companies will hire a broker and then that broker is dealing with the farmer. So um, the, the essential oil company sometimes doesn't even know what's going on in that country and what kind of treatment the farmers are receiving. So with doTERRA, there is no middleman. We work directly with the farmers. And then we have something also in relation to this called Healing Hands Foundation. This is um, doTERRA's charitable organization. And um, this is where we, we, we can donate as customers of doTERRA, we can donate money towards the Healing Hands charity. And 100% of the money we donate goes directly to people in need. So the overhead costs and the administrative costs are actually paid for by the owners of doTERRA. So um, what they do is they, they go into countries like third world countries where over half of our oils are produced or is in third world countries or in impoverished nations. And they go in and they dig wells where they need to be digging wells. They go in and do um, disaster relief. So for example, in Nepal, after they had a, a massive earthquake um, back in 2015, they went into Nepal and helped with disaster relief, rebuilding schools, rebuilding homes, those kinds of things. So I think that's beautiful to be partnered with a company that is very ethical and really thinks about people on both sides of the bottle, not just the people that are purchasing the oils, but also the people who are producing the oils. And then the third thing to consider when choosing an essential oil is the support. Do you have a trusted source where you can go to ask questions? You know, if you buy your essential oils off of the shelf at Walmart or at Costco, chances are the people that work there have no idea about those essential oils. They don't know where they came from. They don't know if they've been tested. So when you choose an essential oil, make sure that you are getting some support behind you and also some continuing education. So you know that it's important to know how to use the oils because they're so powerful and so potent. So doTERRA has um, a series of webinars on their website called the Empowered Success Webinars, which anybody can access at any time. And we also have now a podcast as well called the Empowered Success Podcast. So there is never, um, never an end to the education that doTERRA provides for you. Okay, so we're gonna just review briefly three ways to use essential oils for those of you who are brand new or for those of you who need the refresher, there's three ways to use essential oils. So the first way we use essential oils is aromatically. So this would be done through smell. And anytime you are breathing in the oil molecules, whether that's from a diffuser or whether that's from putting a drop in your hands and inhaling it, or whether you're just wearing it on your body and you can smell the, the aromatic, um, you can smell the, the, the aromatic compounds through you know, wearing it on your skin, that is considered an aromatic use of the oil. So anytime you're breathing in those oil molecules and they're getting down into your lungs and you're smelling them, that's considered aromatic use. <clears throat> now we like to use, excuse me, <clears throat> pardon me. We like to use oils aromatically in our home for a number of different reasons. Sometimes it's for airway support. Um, sometimes it's for mood management, if we're feeling sluggish or if we're you know, feeling extremely anxious, we can use oils to help in those ways. And sometimes I like to diffuse basically just to cleanse the air and to like if there's a, a bug going on in the house, we can, um, we can diffuse some cleansing oils to get rid of that bug. The second way that we use essential oils, and this is one of the ways we're gonna be talking about a lot of the different things today, is topical use. So topical means basically putting the essential oils on your skin, massaging it into your skin, and you're gonna apply it to targeted areas. So if you have an upset stomach, you can rub oils directly onto your abdomen, we like to dilute it with some kind of either a lotion or a carrier oil like fractionated coconut oil or just regular coconut oil because sometimes you can have skin sensitivities with essential oils so dilution is really important um, but this is a really really effective and wonderful way to use essential oils and then the third way that we use essential oils is by ingesting them so using them internally now it's important to know that this is something that is unique to a company like doTERRA because we know our oils have been tested by third party. We know that our oils are containing no outside contaminants, no adulterants at all. So no heavy metals or pesticides or yeast or bacteria or anything that could contaminate the oil 
you don't want to be putting, you know, an impure oil in your body. So make sure that if you're using the oils internally, that it says it's okay to do that on the, on the label of the bottle. And just look at the label and it will tell you whether it's safe for internal use or not. So you can do this by adding a glass to, or adding a drop to a glass of water. It's really important to make sure that you're actually using a glass and not um, plastic because some essential oils can um, break down the petrochemicals in plastic and then you don't want to be putting that in your body. You can also use them by taking a veggie capsule. So doTERRA sells these empty vegetable capsules, which are basically like, it looks like a gelatin capsule, like what's around, you know, a pill that you would take um, from the pharmacy or from your, um, yeah, over the counter medications. And you just drop the oils into the veggie capsule and close the veggie capsule, and then you can swallow it down just like, just like you would with medicine. Or you could also put a drop under your tongue. You want to be careful that you're not using really, really hot oils under your tongue though, like clove or oregano or thyme. So those are the three different ways we use essential oils. As I said, tonight we're going to do a lot of chatting about topical use. And then we also have, I have some great recipes to share with you as well. So um, that would be, you, you would be using them internally then. So we'll move on now to safety tips. So it's important to know a few things about essential oils before you start to use them. Number one, we want to make sure that you're never putting the essential oils in your eyes, your ears, your nose, or other sensitive areas, okay? I've heard horror stories of people saying they had an earache, so they put essential oils directly in their ear and their ear was burning, okay? We never ever want to do anything like that. It's safe to use oils near your ears, but you would dilute it with a carrier oil and you would like kind of rub it around your ear or even you could put some on your finger and rub it along the inside of your inner ear, but you're never going to directly drop the oils into your eyes, ears, nose, or other sensitive areas. The second thing is make sure you're diluting it properly. So with infants and children and, and elderly people and people with sensitive skin, you're probably going to want to dilute it heavier than if you were using the oils for yourself. Myself, I have sensitive skin, so I tend to dilute every single oil. Even if it says on the bottle, it's safe to use undiluted, I still like to dilute it because I just have very sensitive skin, so lots of things bother me. So if you're that type of person where things do bother you, just keep in mind that um, diluting them with a, a carrier oil of some sort would be a great idea. The third thing is to avoid sun exposure after using citrus oils for at least 8 to 12 hours. So citrus oils, not all, but many citrus oils are what we call uh, photosensitive. So that basically means that when you apply them to your skin, your skin is going to be more sensitive to the sun. So just be mindful of that if you're going to be wearing citrus oils like you would wear a perfume to kind of put them in inconspicuous areas of your body where you're not going to see a lot of sun. If you have long hair and you're wearing your hair down, you can definitely rub it on the back of your neck. I like to choose, I choose the inside of my wrist and put it kind of like across my heart, making sure that my, my shirt is covering that area. So that's just something to be mindful of as well. And then lastly, do not put the oils in plastic water bottles. So if you're going to use, so later on I'll share with you a little a summer drink recipe for a really cool daiquiri. If you're going to be using essential oils and ingesting them, make sure you're using glass or stainless steel. So don't put it in plastic. All right, so let's get on with our topic for tonight. I want to tell you a little bit about sunscreens. So here's some information that maybe you might not know about sunscreens that I'm going to share with you today. So there's a group out there, there's a website called, um, it's ewg.org, so it stands for the Environmental Working Group, and they um, produced a report in, in May of 2020, and what they found is that nearly 75% of sunscreens either don't work or they contain concerning ingredients that are readily absorbed by the body. And what I mean by concerning ingredients is I mean ingredients that are harmful for your body. They've either been linked to um, hormone issues or um, cancer or allergies and those kinds of things. So I'm just going to read you a little piece from the EWG website about what it says about sunscreens. It says some of the most worrisome ingredients include, and they're big names and I'm not very good at pronouncing them, um, oxybenzone. And oxybenzone is one of the known endocrine disruptors, okay? So that's basically, it, it really wreaks havoc on your, on your hormones. Um, and of course, your endocrine system contains more than just your hormones, but that's one thing in, in specific that we've noticed a difference in. 
and another ingredient called retinol palmitate, which is a form of vitamin A that can harm the skin and possibly lead to skin tumors. Oxybenzone, so the first one I mentioned, it's in addition to other sunscreen preservatives like methylizo, I don't know how to say that, <laughs> act as a skin allergen in a significant number of people. And these are common sunscreen preservatives that we find in a lot of commercial sunscreens. So thankfully places like Hawaii and Key West have actually banned oxybenzone in their sunscreen because of its ability to bleach and kill coral reefs. So if it can do that to the coral reef, imagine what it does to our skin if we apply it every single day in the summer. So what the EWG recommends is to actually avoid spray sunscreens. It's very difficult to apply, to apply the um, spray, spray sunscreen in a thickness that will provide adequate protection and plus it increases that you're sending potentially damaged sunscreen chemicals directly into your lungs and the lungs of everyone sitting around you. I don't know about you, but personally, I have sensitive airways and I can smell on the beach when somebody has sprayed the sunscreen because it just like, it hits right into my lungs and I have to start coughing. So here's a few more ingredients that you want to be careful with. Um, the most common ones are oxybenzone, as I mentioned, avobenzone, octisolate, octocrylene, and I don't even want to try to say the other two, but you get the picture. These are um, chemicals that are found in our sunscreens that um, can have really, really damaging effects. They're also proven to be present in breast milk, and they're also found in blood tests weeks after applying these sunscreens to your skin. So that's all really scary stuff, right? I mean, like, we want to be safe, we want to protect our body, we want to filter out the harmful UVA and UVB rays, but so many sunscreens contain toxic chemicals. So what can we do? Well, mineral sunscreens are safer because they use zinc oxide. Now, mind you, zinc oxide when you, so if you make your own sunscreen, you have to be careful with the zinc oxide because um, if it, if it um, you know, goes up into the air and goes into your lungs, that's also harmful. So be mindful of that. But they are generally safer and they also contain something called titanium dioxide, which do not penetrate the skin. So they're not absorbed into the bloodstream. So there are a couple of different options. And actually, I'm just going to stop my share for just a second because I'm going to share with you some of the sunscreens that I have. Um, so last year, I bought this one here. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, the light isn't so great, but this one's from Beauty Counter. It's a, it's a wonderful company. This is their Counter Sun line of products. So it's a mineral sunscreen mist. I really like it. It's almost gone, which is probably good because I bought it last year. So it's probably going to expire soon. And then today, literally just before I hopped on to this webinar, I got my order from a company called Attitude. Um, this is a company in Quebec, Canada. And this is mineral sunscreen. They have factor like SPF 30 and, and 45 and 60. And um, this one's a fragrance free um, mineral sunscreen. And then they also have the, the sunscreen stick. This is the face stick. So I bought both because I thought sometimes when I go to the beach with my kids, um, you know, they're always fighting, up, fighting over one bottle of sunscreen. So I bought a few different options so that uh, they can kind of share and do it all at the same time. So those are a few different options. If that is not in your budget or you're just not ready to um, purchase that, give me a sec, I've got a, my screen share is not working. Give me one minute here. There we go. If that's not an option for you, I do have a, a recipe to share with you on the next slide here. Oh, and there's just the website that popped up there. So you can see that's the website there. If you wanna do a little bit more research on sunscreens, it's ewg.org uh, forward slash sunscreen. So you can do a little bit more research there on your sunscreens. And there's actually also a really cool app that Jody actually told me about and it's called Clean Beauty and you can download it. And I've, I downloaded it a, like a week ago or so when she told me about it and I'm testing everything in my house. And you can actually look on, so say you're researching a new sunscreen and, um, and you look for the list of ingredients on their website, you can screenshot that list of ingredients and you can, um, load that into the, the Clean Beauty app and it will actually do an evaluation for you on if it contains toxic chemicals. So that's what made me decide that buying this Attitude sunscreen was going to be okay because
only toxic um, ingredient that it listed was the zinc oxide. And we know that um, zinc oxide is safe to put on your skin. It's just you have to be really careful if you're mixing the powder form because it can get into your lungs. So obviously it's already well mixed into the sunscreen. So I know that it's safe to be using. Um, but then I also took pictures of our old sunscreen that we had been using in the past and it listed about seven different um, chemicals that I should not be putting on my body or on my children's body. So um, you can download that app for free. It's called Clean Beauty. Okay, here's the recipe as promised for the all natural sunscreen. So you're going to need some ingredients that you probably have in the house already, like olive oil. Um, so FCO stands for fractionated coconut oil. It's just a lot to write. So anytime you see FCO, you know that that means fractionated coconut oil. A little bit of beeswax. If you're a DIYer, you probably have some beeswax in the house. You may even have Shea Better already. Zinc oxide might be something that you might not have yet, but you can get it online. You can also buy it at a lot of health food stores. So then you're also going to need a few drops of helichrysum or lavender oil. Now these oils, they don't actually have an SPF factor to these essential oils, but I chose these oils because they're very, very nourishing and really replenishing for the skin. So if you don't have helichrysum or lavender, you can make your sunscreen with just the other ingredients above. But what you're going to do is you are going to get a double boiler. If you don't have a double boiler, what I like to do is just take a, a saucepan, like so a, a regular pan for, for cooking dinner, pasta or whatever, and, um, and put a couple of inches of water on the bottom and then bring it to a nice boil. And then I take a glass measuring cup and I set it inside the bowl, or you can even put um, another glass bowl on top. And um, as long as the water in the pan is boiling pretty vigorously, then you're going to have a nice little homemade double boiler, which you can then use to, to melt these ingredients. So you're going to mix the first five ingredients together. So you're going to do the olive oil, the fractionated coconut oil, the beeswax, the vitamin E and the shea butter together and, um, and wait till that beeswax has all melted until it's all in liquid. And then you're just gonna remove the pan from the double boiler and let it cool a little bit. Let that, um, that liquid oil mixture cool. And once it's cooled a little bit, you're going to mix in the zinc oxide. Again, being very careful that you're not breathing in the, the powdery fumes from the zinc oxide and, uh, and then add your essential oils. And then once it's all mixed well, you're gonna store it in a cool place. Now, this recipe calls for one tablespoon of zinc oxide. If you want to increase the SPF factor, so I don't have an exact number, but I, based on my skin and kind of how long I can stay out in the sun, this recipe makes a sunscreen that's approximately uh, 15 SPF, okay? So if you wanna increase the SPF factor, then you would just add additional zinc oxide to your recipe. So if you double it and do two, two tablespoons of zinc oxide, it's approximately 30 um, SPF. But it's also important to keep in mind that this water is not recipe, or. So the recipe is not waterproof. So because the, the, um, the sunscreen sits on your skin, it doesn't penetrate the skin, um, it's not waterproof. So if you do go in the water, make sure that you're gonna reapply again shortly after that. So just keep that in mind. A lot of the things that make things waterproof, like waterproof mascara, waterproof sunscreen, yeah, it's not, it's not a natural substance. So um, if you have a waterproof sunscreen, then it's probably got some chemicals in there that aren't so great for you. So this is a great natural alternative. Okay, so sometimes even though we do wear sunscreen and we are very careful with our skin, sometimes we do still sometimes get burnt. And so if that's you and you do still sometimes get burnt, you can make this after spray. So you just get a little uh, glass spray bottle and if you don't have glass for this one, it's not that big of a deal. You can use plastic for this. Um, my glass spray bottle is around a four ounce size and I use eight drops of lavender, eight drops of peppermint and eight drops of tea tree, a little bit of fractionated coconut oil and I fill the rest with water and I have an amazing soothing after sun spray. So lavender is amazing and soothing for, for the skin for all kinds of things, bug bites, bee stings, burns. Peppermint is gonna add that nice cooling effect for you and uh, tea tree is just really, it's a great antiseptic and it helps prevent infection. I'm just gonna check out the chat here for just one second, if I can, <laughs> just to make sure that everyone's good. Okay, excellent, love after sun spray. Excellent, okay, thank you so much for, um, so I have somebody here, Mira, you mentioned that you were invited by Rafia. Okay, so, 
hopefully Jody can see that comment. Maybe when she gets back in, then um, then she can then she can add you to the to the draw. So we'll keep an eye on the chat and make sure that everyone who is eligible for the draw will be eligible for the draw. Okay, so that's our after sun spray. And by the way, guys, if you're watching this and you know you're trying to take notes and write down all the ingredients, if I'm going too fast, you can just take a screenshot. So if you're on your phone. Um, you can just take a screenshot and save the recipe for later, if that works. All right, now bug repellents. I have an amazing recipe for a bug repellent spray or lotion. So a lot of times in an effort to avoid the bug bites and the insect borne diseases like West Nile or Lyme disease, you might automatically turn to products containing DEET which is known to be the most effective insect repellent on the market. But for some people, when they apply DEET to their skin, especially for an extended period of time, it can cause some adverse reactions uh, like rashes and redness and swelling or even hives. And in some cases, um, the ingestion of DEET, so if you're breathing it in or getting it in your mouth after it's been on your hands, it actually can lead to seizures. There have also been reports of DEET-induced seizures among children. So although the studies kind of indicate sort of mixed results, there is some evidence that DEET does contain a carcinogenic property that can produce dangerous effects when, when it's inhaled or applied to your skin. And the ASPCA, which is the Animal, po Animal Poison Control Center, it reports that when pets are exposed to DEET containing products, it can cause significant clinical side effects. So if your pet inhales DEET, this can cause airway inflammation and difficulty breathing. So we do have some natural alternatives here for you that are very, very effective against all kinds of bugs and pests like mosquitoes and um, black flies and horse flies and sand flies. And some of the oils in here are also known to repel ticks as well. So this is my recipe here. Again, you may absolutely take a screenshot if you, um, if you don't feel you have enough time to jot this all down. I just need a drink for one second. Okay, so we have 10 drops of TerraShield. So TerraShield is doTERRA's repellent blend. We also have a TerraShield spray. So if, you don't, if you're not a DIYer and you don't wanna make this, you can just buy the TerraShield spray. It comes in a 30 ml spray bottle and it's already pre-diluted with fractionated coconut oil so you can just spray it directly on your skin. We also have citronella, lavender, lemongrass, peppermint, and lemon eucalyptus. So citronella and lemon eucalyptus are um, relatively new oils. So if you've been with doTERRA for a while, they just launched this one last September. So it's only been around less than a year. You're going to take some liquid carrier oil like fractionated coconut oil and just put in about a teaspoon or so into the spray bottle. And uh, this is just to kind of help the oil stay suspended and to fully absorb into the skin. Then you fill the rest of that four ounce spray bottle with water and you shake it a little bit to mix the oils before applying. I like to make sure that we are applying this spray to our skin. So sometimes my kids just kind of spray their clothes and then run away and then wonder why they're still getting eaten by bugs. You really need to get these oils into the skin. What I find to be the most effective, in the center there you see that little bucket of lotion. I use about a three quarter cup of unscented lotion. You can buy that from doTERRA. You can also buy it in bulk online. And I use the same amount of oil, so the 10 drops of those, the six of peppermint, only because peppermint is just kind of one of those cooling oils, so it might be a little bit more um, tingly on your skin. So we use a few less drops of peppermint. But yeah, you just, you just mix it all together in some unscented lotion, and then you apply it as bug lotion. And I find that for myself, being a mom of five, especially with the younger kids, it works much more effectively to, to put it in a lotion. So hopefully that's helpful for you there. And again, just in case you do get bitten by bugs, we have a bug bite relief roller. So you've all seen those 10 mil roller bottles. Perhaps you have some in your home as well. You can easily make a bug bite relief roller with 20 drops of lavender, 20 drops of tea tree, and 20 drops of peppermint. And you fill the rest of that roller bottle up with some kind of liquid carrier oil, and you can put it directly onto the bug bites. Of course, being really careful if you have bug bites that are really close to your eyes, be extra careful because Peppermint too close to the eye, we all know what that does, right? <laughs> Your eyes will water profusely. So that's our bug bite relief roller recipe. 
And now for those of you who are out doing your grocery shopping trips, or maybe you have to run into Walmart or you have to, you know, maybe you're going camping and um, you don't easily have soap and water available. This hand cleansing gel is made from our On Guard Protective Blend, which is an amazing blend. We all love On Guard for how it boosts the immune system and uh, kills pathogens. So this is an amazing hand cleansing gel. You can make it in gel or you can also make it in spray. So for the gel, you're basically just mixing the On Guard, some aloe vera gel and some water. And what I like to do is I just take a bowl, so just a glass bowl from my kitchen, and I mix those ingredients together and I just take a spoon, I mix it really well. And then if I feel like it's still a little bit too goopy, too thick, I just add a little bit more water depending on the consistency you want. I tend to make mine a little bit thinner because I do have like a pump, um, a pump bottle that I use to put my hand sanitizer gel in. Or you can also make it in a spray. So you just take a spray bottle and about 20 drops of On Guard, depending on the size of your spray bottle. Uh, do what feels right for you. Anywhere between 10 and 20 drops is fine for a two to four ounce spray bottle. And you just fill it up with some water and you've got yourself some, some wonderful hand cleansing spray. And then we all know sometimes we suffer from those seasonal irritations, otherwise known as allergies, right? So our wonderful allergy blend is lemon, lavender, and peppermint. So lemon helps to dry up mucus and, and secretions. Peppermint helps to open up airways and lavender is a natural antihistamine. So you can either throw two drops of each of those in your diffuser and you can diffuse it. Say if you're working in the office and your allergies are acting up, diffuse it while you're working in your office or diffuse it at bedtime. Um, you can also put it in a veggie capsule and take it internally like two drops of each, or you could do the, the Tri-Ease soft gels, and those are pre-made, ready-made soft gel capsules for you to take them internally. And there's approximately two drops of each of those oils in the soft gels. You can also make a roller bottle. So the roller bottle blends um, containing those same three oils, lemon, lavender, and peppermint, around 20 drops each. Throw it up or top it up with um, the fractionated coconut oil and you've got an amazing roller blend that you can use behind the ears, across the forehead, under the nose, um, anywhere where you're going to basically smell those oils. Now if you're using this roller for children I would probably dilute it heavier and I would probably do just 10 drops of each. Okay, next I have a, a blend here for you for um, fruit and vegetable wash. So especially now when we come home from the grocery store, it's a super important. I've always done this before anyway, but some people maybe haven't been in this practice, maybe haven't been in that habit yet, but making yourself a nice um, disinfecting fruit and vegetable wash is really important right now, especially in these kinds of times. So you can make yourself a disinfecting spray, just use a tablespoon of vinegar, eight to 10 drops of lemon oil. I use the, I have a four ounce spray bottle there. Um, I fill the rest up with water and I basically just spray off. If I'm in a hurry, I do it like that. I'll spray off my grapes and then rinse it off, scrub them gently and rinse it off. Most of the time though, I actually fill my sink. And um, so this disinfecting wash, I'm filling my sink with cool water, about a quarter cup of vinegar. I actually don't measure, guys. Like seriously, I just kind of just do a splash. <laughs> but for the sake of writing a recipe down, it's probably around a quarter cup of vinegar and a drop of lemon for each large fruit. So let's say I'm washing 10 apples. I'll do like maybe five drops of, um, of, of, of lemon oil. So for each large fruit. So um, I'm trying to think of other large, large fruits where I would just do one drop. I can't think of it right off the top of my head, but this is just a guideline. Do what you feel comfortable with. Um, if you want to add more, add more. If you feel like less is more, that's okay too. Just scrub them all gently. Make sure you rinse it well. I've done it before where I've washed things with On Guard, the romaine lettuce. <laughs> I washed in On Guard one time and my kids did say it tasted a little bit like On Guard. So make sure you rinse it really well. Okay, and then summer. Summertime, children. We, I mean, children are at play. And maybe some of you here on this webinar have children who like to be rough and tough and maybe they're at the park. I, I'm not sure if parks are open up yet at this point, but certainly when you're on the campground or when you're at the beach or when you're just horsing around in the backyard, sometimes they can get hurt. So for cuts and scrapes, I love doTERRA's Correct X. It's an amazing little ointment that you get in a little tube and it's cheaper than polysporin and I think it lasts longer than polysporin and it's so healing. It has done amazing things. We have great testimonies about Correct X. 
If you don't have correct decks yet, you can make yourself an owie spray or an owie roller. My kids laugh at me now because they're older and they don't like calling it the owie blend, but that's what we call it. So it's 10 drops of lavender and tea tree and frankincense. So 10 of each. And um, you can fill the rest of that roller bottle with, um, with fractionated coconut oil. And you've got an amazing little blend that you can put on all of their cuts and scrapes. For tired little bodies after a long day playing outside or at the beach or playing soccer in the front yard, when they're getting tired and maybe their muscles are sore, you can use the doTERRA Rescuer Roller, which is from our kids line. It's the little blue roller there with the blue lid and it's great for achy muscles. If you don't have that one, you can also use diluted deep blue. So deep blue is our, our soothing blend and it's great for muscle aches and joint pain as well. And then for calming their minds at the end of a busy day, you can use the calmer roller. So that's the purple one. And that's again, the one from the kids kit. If you don't have that, you could use something like lavender or serenity or balance as well. Any of those will work great. And perhaps we've been out in the garden a little bit too long. Maybe you're weeding the flower beds or maybe you're weeding your vegetable garden. And some of us spend a little bit more time digging in the dirt. So sometimes we have adult aches and pains as well, or even cuts and scrapes. We can do the same thing with our cuts and scrapes, apply correct X or make an owie spray or an owie roller. Um, and then again, using deep blue or aroma touch for achy muscles. And aroma touch is our massage blend. And uh, that's one of the ones that we're giving away today. So make sure you're putting your, um, in the, in, your, in the chat, for those of you who are joining us, sorry, I should have probably repeated this a little bit sooner, but for those of you who maybe just joined us, um, in the chat, if you can tell us if you've been invited here tonight by someone other than Jody Rogers or myself, Melissa Kottenberg, then um, put in the chat who invited you to this webinar and make sure that the chat is set to all panelists and attendees. And because we have Jody, who is an attendee tonight, who's um, monitoring the chat at this point, and uh, she'll be able to see who all has been invited by other people. So we're giving away an Aroma Touch oil tonight, and we'll do that in just a few minutes. So we also have some delicious summer recipes that can help us get through these days where we want to, um, you know, we want to have people over for dinner, but we're not quite ready for that yet. You can still have a party. For dinner, you can still make your, your nice summer recipe. So this is a lemon fruit dip. This is made with cream cheese and you can either use sour cream or Greek yogurt. A little bit of sugar to sweeten it, especially if you're using the, the sour cream or Greek yogurt. Um, some vanilla and then a couple drops of lemon essential oil. Just mix all the ingredients with a mixer until it's smooth and um, serve it with your choice of fresh fruits and it will stay good in, the, in a sealed container in the fridge for two to three days. And you don't have to use lemon if that's not your favorite. You could do grapefruit, you could do lime, um, you could do, um, I'm trying to think of other ones, grapefruit, lime. Um, I'm drawing a blank as to the other citrus oils. Wild orange would be another one that you could use. Anything citrus would be a delicious addition to this summer recipe. <clears throat> and then I also have a recipe here for a virgin daiquiri. Now, it doesn't have to be a virgin daiquiri. I mean, if you're going to add a bit of rum or vodka, I won't tell anybody. <laughs> so to do this, you would just need some frozen strawberries and some vanilla, a few drops of lime essential oil. Again, it can be a lemon, it can be lemon, grapefruit, wild orange, a little bit of water to make it a bit thinner. And if you need some extra sweetening, you can do a little bit of honey or maple syrup or stevia, or even sometimes what I do is I add a, a frozen overripe banana. So when my bananas are too ripe and I don't want to eat them anymore. I peel them and I throw them in a little baggie, <clears throat> excuse me, and I throw them in my freezer so that they're ready for the next drink that I would like to make. Mix all these ingredients in a blender and you can add a little bit more water for a thinner consistency or you can even, if you want a creamier type of drink, you can add a bit of um, some yogurt to it. Here's another recipe for a tropical smoothie. This one you can make with organic coconut milk. Um, you could also make it with dairy milk if you wanted to as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Some Greek yogurt, a banana, and if you want to make it a little bit healthier and add a little bit of zinc or iron or omegas, you can use some flaxseed or sunflower or pumpkin seed. Um, throw in some fresh fruit chunks like mango chunks work well, and a drop of tangerine or another citrus oil. Blend it all together and pour it into some glasses and 
Yummo, you have an amazing summer recipe. Now, what happens if you have had too many pina coladas or too many non-virgin daiquiris? What are some oils that you can use for that? The Digest Zen blend. Now, in Canada, it's known as Zen Jest, but this is our digestive blend. It's a blend of peppermint and fennel and ginger and anise and all kinds of amazing oils that are great for the uh, digestive system. And you can put a drop or two in a glass of water and chug it back or you can make a roller bottle. So like this, you can do um, 40 drops. This seems pretty high to me, 40 wild orange and 40 digestive blend. I would probably do 20 and 20, but it's totally up to you. Um, certainly if you had children, you would want to dilute that a little bit more as well, but this is what we call our belly blend. And you just roll that all over the abdomen and it's very, very soothing. Uh, anytime you've either had too many pina coladas, which can happen sometimes, or, um, if you've just eaten something, maybe it was too spicy, or say you, you know, were sitting around a campfire and you guys decided to, to roast some sausages by the fire and, you know, at 11 p.m. that doesn't always agree with all of us, right? So if we're having a bit of heartburn or indigestion, this is a great blend to use. All right, so that brings us to the end of our presentation for tonight for the, the content about getting ready for summer. I wanted to share with you, though, that we do also do webinars that we call Essential Oils 101 webinars. And what we teach in these webinars is a little bit more about, we, get, we dig a little bit deeper into how to use the essential oils. So we cover what the essential oils are, we cover why quality matters, so why doTERRA is a little bit different, what the oils are all good for. So we'll actually you know, tell you what we use lavender for and what we use peppermint for, and we'll kind of walk you through some of our top 10 oils or some of our most popular oils and share with you how to use them. And then we'll also share with you how to get them in your home. So for those of you who are interested in this kind of a webinar, Jody and I both run these as well on Thursdays at 7 p.m. So we have one happening this Thursday at seven. And um, if you're interested, get in touch with the person who invited you to this webinar or get in touch with Jody and myself and um, we'll make sure that you get access to that webinar as well. So this is a little bit of, of our schedule of what's happening from now till the end of July. We have our weeks booked all the way to the end of August, um, but just so you know, these are the next ones that are coming up. So next week, Monday, uh, Mondays at 8 p.m. is our evenings with oils, and we're, next Monday we're doing oils for pregnancy. So it's not just pregnancy, it's also like uh, labor, delivery, postpartum. We have a doula coming on, a doula on Jody's team who's coming to share with us some amazing information about that. So if you or some of your friends are expecting a baby or you're planning to be pregnant at some point and you're interested in this content, definitely hop on and we can share the, the um, registration link with you so that you know how to get access to that. Then after that, we're going to do oils and emotions and then oils and children and you can see the rest of the schedule there. We've got lots of amazing content coming right for you. So again, these are your hosts for the evening, Jody Rogers and myself, Melissa Kottlenberg. And if you're brand new and say you were invited here by someone and you have never tried doTERRA before, and if you're not currently working with someone in doTERRA, but you would like to try a free sample, connect with the person who invited you tonight. And we can definitely get a sample out to you for sure. Jody and I are always willing to share our oils with others and, and give you guys your very first doTERRA experience. So now is time for um, questions and I'm actually just going to stop my share and I'm going to invite Jody back on again and um, I think she's here as Dave. <laughs> so I'm going to promote her to panelists and we're going to open it up for uh, questions. I'm going to check out the chat and see what your questions are and, um, and we will pick our winner for the free Aroma Touch. So it looks like Jody is coming on. There she is, a beautiful hat. This is my hat for the draw. <laughs> oh, very nice, I love that. Were you able, Jody, to follow along in the chat to see how many we have eligible for the, for the free oil? No, I asked people to list their names again. So just maybe if you can list your name again, if you, Thank you, Jennifer. She said, great class. Way to go, Melissa. Um, so if you were invited by someone other than myself or Melissa, just put your name in the, in the, to all panelists and attendees. And uh, well, someone's going to win a, 
And you both need to be on the call. That's the tricky part. Yes. <laughs> yes. We, didn't, we didn't write the fine print. You both need to be here. So I'm not seeing, mm -hmm. I'm not seeing anyone respond. So I don't know if that means nobody. nobody. Okay. So I, I have someone that said, um, so her name is Mira and she says she was invited by Rafia. So okay. is Mira still here? Yeah. looks like she's still here. So that means, and is Rafia here though? So Mira can be entered into the draw, but if Rafia wants to win, she has to be here. <laughs> That's how we're doing it. All right. So anyone else? Oh, the only Ari oh Arena, 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 Bob Bell. So Arena and Rima. So we've got Mira. I'm writing them down now. We're getting, now we got them. Now they're coming to the top. Arena okay. and Rima. Anyone else? Anyone Anybody else? else? So, so far, are both Arena and Rima on the call right now. Let's look. Yeah. Um, yes, Arena is. And Rima is still here as well. I see their names there. Okay, <laughs> good. Anyone else? So we have else? so far three. Is there anybody else? I see someone here named Galaxy S9. I don't know who that is, <laughs> but if you uh, were invited by someone other than Jody or myself, then um, hit, hit the chat button and let us know who invited you and we will enter you into the draw to win the free oil. I'll give one more minute. Maybe not a full minute, a few more seconds. And so our goal with with this guys is that you will invite your friends so any of you on the call who want to invite someone so if you if you know someone who's pregnant or who maybe just had a baby or who is wanting to get pregnant and is curious about oils even if you're just curious about oils and maybe you want to maybe you just want to understand how oils can be used for babies because some some of them will be not so unfamiliar and oils for a postpartum mom not so unfamiliar or not so uncommon with oils for women who just have monthly hormonal imbalances, right? Or maybe mm -hmm. facing um, different stresses in life. So it's not, it's not going to be, you, there will be nuggets that you can take away, but our goal is really to get a wider audience and learning about the oils. So from now going forward every week, so if you invite someone and, and they join, you can both be entered to win. So if you invite four people, your name will go in four times, okay? So if you invite five people, you'll your name will go in five times, so you'll have more chances to win. So we'd love the, the help getting the word out about our about our classes, and, uh, and we're gonna just reward someone with a gift of oil for doing that. So it looks like they're all in. There's no, no chatter and no, uh, no questions. Else. So I will remove my, my hat. I'm gonna do it old school way, right? Where we, we have a draw. So here we go. I can't see, we got three names in there. And the winner is Rima. Awesome, Rima congratulations. And Aroma Touch. So congratulations, Rima. Yay, Thanks congratulations. Irina. And, uh, and again, Rima, so the, the oil you're winning is Aroma Touch. So if you haven't used this one before, this is our massage blend. It's amazing for achy muscles, um, sore joints. A lot of people actually use this for headaches too. If you have tension headaches, um, you can dilute it. You can put it in a roller bottle and just kind of roll it across your neck or your temples, across your forehead. But it's also just an amazing oil to use for massage. So if you have you know, um, kids that need to wind down at the end of a tough day and or maybe they're just having a bit of a meltdown and they need a little bit of time, you can just do a little few drops of Aroma Touch with some coconut oil and for a nice relaxing massage. I love the smell of the Aroma Touch. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining guys and Melissa, thanks for that. That was great and really helpful. So hopefully you've all learned a few things, something you can incorporate into your family for the summer. All right. Awesome. Thanks, so Thanks for joining, guys. We'll see you again. Bye. Bye.